Over in Afghanistan, the Taliban are busy creating a state. They have a government, they have a capital, but they don't have an army. I know it sounds ridiculous. The biggest threat to Afghans is the Taliban. So why do they need an army? And more importantly, what will this army do? They will carry out suicide attacks. We are not saying this, the Taliban is. And for the record, the Taliban has always had suicide squads. They attacked Afghan soldiers and Western infrastructure. But that was during the insurgency. Now they claim to be the government. So what will these squads do now? Reports say they will defend the borders, believe it or not. The recruitment process has already begun. The plan is to create an army of 100,000 soldiers. Among them is a special suicide battalion. Frankly, it's not the decision that confuses me. What else do you expect from a terrorist organization? What confuses me is the logistics. Suicide squads work during insurgencies. They're not acceptable, but they exist. But how will an official army deploy them? The Taliban won't say. But reports claim some suicide bombers are already on the job. They have reached the northeastern border with China and Tajikistan. I'm sure Beijing is surprised and saddened. All that tacit support, all of those funds, and what do they get in return? Suicide bombers at their border. We don't expect anything less from the Taliban. Do you remember their parade in September? Their terrorists were marching in formation. They were flaunting their shiny American arsenal. But one weapon stood out. It was a suicide vest. It was their most potent weapon during the insurgency. In fact, many countries have deployed suicide squads. But those were different times, different intentions. Japan, for instance, perfected the system during the Second World War. They had special kamikaze pilots. These pilots did not drop bombs. They were the bomb. They would crash their planes into Allied vessels, killing themselves and the target. Around 3,800 kamikaze pilots died during the Second World War. In 2006, reports emerged of an Iranian suicide squad, 40,000 trained attackers ready to sacrifice themselves. This was Iran's way of protecting its nuclear program. Their threat was simple. If the West attacks our nuclear sites, our suicide bombers will attack you. North Korea does the same. They recruit young women to seduce and kill targets. It doesn't matter if they stay alive. Completing the mission is more important. So these are three examples of suicide squads. One is from 75 years back. Another is most likely a boast. And the third is by a rogue state. Frankly, now it makes sense. The Taliban is a mix of all of these three examples. Outdated mindset, boastful and rogue. But this attitude has real-world consequences. Most of these suicide bombers are young. Reports say as, as young as 20. They come from poor families, mostly with no education. The Taliban recruits them, brainwashes them, and pushes them into the battlefield. But who will they fight? The Taliban has complete control over Afghanistan. The Western troops are long gone. So who's the enemy? Perhaps these lifeless dolls. That's right. Meet the Taliban's newest enemy, mannequins. Not all mannequins, just the female ones. The Taliban says these lifeless dolls are un-Islamic. Their solution? To chop off their heads. Videos like this one are popping up across Afghanistan. Shopkeepers are beheading their mannequins. I know it, it looks comical, but think about the hatred here. Afghan women have been denied jobs, they've been denied education, they can't even travel alone, but the Taliban are not satisfied. They're now targeting anything that resembles a woman. Mannequins, idols, everything. None of this is sanctioned by Islam, by the way. Suicide attacks are not mentioned in the Quran. Martyrs are celebrated, yes, but it doesn't encourage suicide for martyrdom. So why is the Taliban doing it? Because none of this is about religion. It is about power and ruthlessness. Here's an old commentary about Afghanistan's neighbor, Pakistan. They say Pakistan is an army with a state. You could say something similar about Afghanistan now. It's a terrorist with a state. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.